Hi and welcome back to Get the Book, the channel that helps you read more and hopefully read better. Today I am going to help you take a look inside the beautiful colorful pages of this lovely coffee table book titled In Paris, 20 Women on Life in the City of Lights. So if you love fashion, travel and fascinating stories about love and life, sit back and enjoy this video. Paris was born out of a collaborative effort between Jeanne Damas and Laurent Bastide. Jeanne Damas is the it girl for French fashion. She is a fashion influencer, designer and now author. If you have been on Instagram or the Vogue YouTube channel, chances are you already know who she is. Laurent Bastide is a journalist and the spokesperson for feminism and representation of women. If these are areas of your interest, chances are that you already know who Lauren is as well. Together, these strong and vibrant independent women set out to accomplish their dream of traveling around Paris and meeting and sharing the stories of the inspiring women who call the City of Lights their home. Over nine months with a notebook and Olympus camera in hand, Jeanne and Lauren interviewed 20 Parisian women from all walks of life. So who are these women? Keep watching and I will read some of the interviews for you. An important detail to know about In Paris is that it is multifaceted. It's not just a book about Parisian women. It is as much a book about Paris the city of lights and dare I say love. Throughout the book you will find curated lists of the best restaurants in Paris, the best florists, vintage clothing stores, cafes, wine lists and where to find them and so much more. It's like a mini travel guide but not one that takes you to the cliché tourist spots. Instead, it will take you to the hot spots that locals frequent the inner lanes with the best-kept secret hangouts that locals don't want to overexpose. The book is designed so beautifully that it seems like it's a curated Instagram page. The aesthetics are truly French. Beautiful portraits and candid images spread throughout the book makes it a delight for the eyes, while the light yet power-packed narrative makes it a delight for the soul. Let's take a look at the women in the book now, shall we? 20 different women and 20 unique stories. Each story begins with four vague lines or words. But what seems vague at first is actually a thread that binds the individual piece together. I'd like to read a few pieces from the book to give you a taste of what to expect from In Paris.
Naomi was born in Los Angeles. Her mother is half English, half Chinese, and her father is Israeli Polish. She spent a while living in Hong Kong and then London until her family set up home in Paris. She was seven years old at that time. I learned to speak French when I was four because my parents sent me to French school in Hong Kong. The first time I saw Paris, I found the city so bright, so hypnotizing, and I didn't want to go back to London, a cold, wet city where it gets dark at 4 p.m. Her wish was granted. She moved with her parents into an apartment block in the 16th arrondissement, where she had a romantic, creative childhood. Very early on, Naomi knew she wanted to be an artist. In terms of music, she recently launched a joint project with her husband. An extraordinary site called Radio, where you can select and listen to songs from all over the world according to decade from 1910 to the present day. We have contributors from the four corners of the world. One of our most active contributors lives on a small island off the coast of Brazil and collects all 78s. Over 500 tracks are sent to us every day. We make a selection, so we only keep the best. Every morning, we read our emails. This morning, for example, a blind filmmaker sent us a message to tell us we had changed his life. This is our way of making the world more open, more enjoyable. A bookshop, William Burroughs, Scottish Boarding School, Gabrielle, two and a half. Sylvia Whitman is the daughter of George Whitman, an erudite American who fell in love with Paris after Second World War and decided to move here because he wanted to live in a city where people are poets and life is poetry. In 1951, he founded this bookshop on the Rue de la Bercherie and in 1964, he renamed it Shakespeare and Company. Whitman took the name from another old bookshop run by another Sylvia, Sylvia Beach. In her bookshop, Beach had mixed with the lives of James Joyce, Ernest Hemingway, and F. Scott Fitzgerald. In the 1950s, in George Whitman, Whitman's shop, it wasn't that unusual to bump into Allen Ginsberg or William Burroughs. My father was an eccentric character, a bit of a Don Cojito. If he was bored during a reading, he would burn his hair. For him, a world outside the bookshop didn't exist. He always left the bookshop door open so that the world could dive right in. He had a lot of thefts though. Be not inhospitable to strangers lest they be angels in disguise, is inscribed on one of the beams in our bookshop and was a very important motto for my father and increasingly important in my eyes when you see what's happening in the world. He travelled a lot, especially in South America. He was 38 when he opened the bookshop and he was 70 when I was born. She was still very young when her parents divorced and she ended up in London with her mother. She had almost no communication with her father at that time. She was in boarding school in Scotland where, she tells us proudly, she wore a kilt every day. She continued her studies in London and didn't see her father again for almost 10 years. And then at the age of 21, I suddenly realized he was 91 and I needed to see him again before it was too late. George greeted his daughter in a very casual manner, introduced, introducing her to everyone as an English actress named Emily. But he threw me into the bookstore and passed everything on to me. 
we became best friends. I wasn't a big reader before and it was then that I fell in love with the bookshop and with Paris. That was all from In Paris, 20 Women on Life in the City of Lights. I certainly hope you have enjoyed this look inside and are inspired to get the book for yourself. I guarantee that if you get to the end of the book, by the end of the 20 stories, you will feel as though you have lived the Parisian life walking through the Aaron Dinsimores yourself. If you have enjoyed this look inside, follow my channel for more such videos and book reviews. Until next time, bye!